you. Uh, back with us, Jeff, and uh, he's heading off to Juilliard for his master's work. And so uh, we're excited for Jeff to be here today and to be playing with Gary. So we're always excited to have Gary here. And somewhere hidden behind, there he is, there's Jeff. So thank you to our music folks. I do have to let you know if it seems a little warm in here, it is because the air conditioner is broken. So uh, sorry, <laughs> we'll get it fixed. But for now, um, feel free to use your fans or whatever you want to do uh, just to stay as cool as you can. I figured I'd wear my black robe. If I don't pass out, we'll probably do OK. So welcome, welcome. Um, a couple announcements of things that are happening. Uh, one is we want to celebrate Gary and Winnie's anniversary, 63-year wedding anniversary. The flowers are indicative of that. So that's, that's terrific. Um, I also want to let you know we have a number of prayer concerns. And if you could add Pam Buddy, she's um, struggling with sciatica in addition to all the names that are there. We'll be praying for all those people in our prayers of the people this afternoon or this, this morning. Um, a couple other things. Yeah, good timing. <laughs> We're going to be celebrating the shower that we didn't have yesterday, but we'll be gathering gifts in Fellowship Hall. You'll see it's kind of festively displayed. Um, and so uh, if, if you brought a gift or, or a card or something to share, and then we'll be taking those gifts to Christine and to Greer uh, and, and uh, celebrating with them. Uh, well, for Greer and Colby, uh, hopefully their new baby will be coming home on this afternoon if all continues the way it's been going. So that's good news. And Christine and Emmanuel are doing okay. Christine's uh, contractions have slowed way down. So that's really, really good. So we're thankful for that. So, um, so do keep praying for Christine and for Greer and them, but uh, we'll be celebrating a little bit in our fellowship hall um, for, for, uh, for our gathering. Um, the pictures that are in your bulletin are all pictures, and I'll be talking about this in the sermon, but they're all pictures from the first day of me feeding ministry this past week and we had nine of our people and three of our young people included uh, in that feeding ministry. So we'll be talking a little bit about that and celebrating that. I want to let you know Sunday school is starting back on the 11th of September. And we'll be having our church picnic on that day. So mark that date on your calendar. And we're going to be doing something kind of fun. The curriculum we're using for adults and for youth and for children will all be the same curriculum, it's called Follow Me, Jesus, Biblical Practices for Faithful Living. And we'll be exploring in a number of different ways what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ, which seems like a great thing for us to, to do. And if you can't make any of the Sunday school classes, we'll be also looking at those same topics from a different angle in worship each Sunday. So we're gonna try to tie all this thing, these things, worship, Christian education, all together. Um, so that'll be kicking off on 11th of September. But today, we're, <laughs> we're gonna have the first ever uh, Heritage Pickleball Tournament. How many people know how to play pickleball? Perfect. <laughs> it's a great learning opportunity. I have never played, but I've watched all sorts of videos. We have a net that's gonna be set up in the parking lot under the shade at five o'clock so if you've always been curious about pickleball, it's a two-on-two -two sport. It takes a lot less um, skill than tennis or all the other things we play. Um, but it's just fun. And uh, so come by, check it out, and uh, we'll be playing a little bit of pickleball at 5 o'clock in the parking lot um, coming up. Yeah, Alex. How did it break? We don't know yet for sure, but we'll find out. How long, how, how, how long is it in here? How long in here, is it? it is 78 degrees, <laughs> which is not bad considering where, where we've been. So, but you're dressed appropriately, Alex. I think you'll be in good shape. Well, let's, uh, 
let's pause for a moment. Take a deep breath. Center ourselves on the Christ who has called us here to worship as we prepare to worship God. Please stand as you are able for the call to worship. Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Let us serve God by serving others in his name. Let us, Let us worship, worship God in scripture, sermon, song, and service. as we gather around the baptismal font to confess our sins and receive the forgiveness that God offers in Jesus Christ. Let us share together our unison prayer. Great and gracious God, who is revealed in Jesus Christ, we give you thanks for the model of service leadership that Jesus offers. We confess that we are slow to follow preferring authority and power over sacrifice and service. Forgive us, God, and free us to serve each other in the power of the Holy Spirit, as you have served us in Christ. Hear us as we pray silently to you. Friends, who is in a position to condemn only Christ? And Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. And this Jesus Christ prays for us. If anyone is in Christ, that person's a new creation. Now the old life, that's gone. But behold, a new life has begun. Friends, believe it. It is the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Hallelujah. We are forgiven.
of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us take a moment and pass the peace of Christ to our neighbors. Peace of Christ be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Gary. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace of Christ be with you. Peace be with you and the turtle. Peace be with you. be seated. As we feel God's spirit in our lives and in the world, let us respond by offering our gifts to God. While Gary offers his musical gifts, we invite you to come forward with your gifts, symbolic of all the many ways people offer gifts. Let every gift and every giver glorify God this day and the days ahead. I also want to thank Jeff Galante for his gifts of music as well. Thank you. Um, let us pray together the prayer of dedication. Triune God of service and sacrifice, we come to you offering our gifts as a love offering for the great gift you offer us in Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated.
Our first reading today is taken from the Gospel according to John, chapter 13, verses 1 through 15. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I'm doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet but is entirely clean, and you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you're right, for that's what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. For I've set you an example that you should do as I have done to you. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. I want to invite the children to come forward for the children's message. And we'll gather right here at the front pew. Hey, Michael, how are you? Good, good, good. Hey, Mariah, how are you? And there's Robin. Hey, Robin. How are you? Good, good. And who, who do you have? What, what stuffed animal do you have today? A turtle named? Fire cookie. Cool, very cool. Well, you know, today we're talking about service. And so you can see in this picture here, there's a picture of a bunch of kids from our church that are in line serving people. And Jeff, do you remember? You're the good looking one with the cap on to keep hair out of the food, standing right next to Evangeline and next to uh, the rest of the kids. But that was a great opportunity to serve. But you know, the story we read today is about Jesus serving in a different way. Do you know what Jesus did in the story today? I'll give you a hint. Here's some of the stuff that he used. He washed people's feet. He took off his robe and he washed people's feet. And do you have any idea why people need their feet washed in Jesus' day? Yeah? They were dirty, exactly. They would be wearing sandals. Like you guys all have covered shoes and socks and everything. But no, they would have sandals. And when they would go someplace, they would walk along these dirty roads and their feet would get all dirty. So one of the first things that someone would say when they came in, instead of saying, would you like to put your bags away? Or would you like to have a, a cold drink? The first thing they would say is, oh, let me get one of the servants to wash your feet so that you'll feel comfortable. Wouldn't that, wouldn't that be fun to do? Weird and fun. Well, I figured it would be too weird to do, but I thought, you know, when we get ready to eat, what do we wash? We don't wash our feet. What do we usually wash? Hands. So what I thought here is a towel for you. Here is a towel for you. Okay. And here is a towel for you. And we're just going to have a chance to wash your hands. So if you just hold your hands up, this water is nice and warm. 
Okay. And then if you want to dry it with that towel, that would be great. There you go, Robin. There you go. And your hands. Okay. Good job. Great. You want to dry it with your towel or with your turtle, either one. Okay, Michael. Great. Good job. And you have a towel. Alex, you want to get your hands washed? Let me give you a towel, too, so you'll have a way to dry. Here's a towel. And we'll wash your hands as well if you hold them over the wire. It's nice and warm water, too. So, Okay, good job. And there's a towel for you. So, what, did, what, what was it like to have somebody wash your feet in worship? What was it like? Weird, yes, weird. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of weird. Who, who, who at home usually does wash your hands if, when you were a little kid? You usually wash them now, but when you were a little kid, like Ethan's age, wherever Ethan is, when you were a little kid, who used to wash your hands? Mom or dad. Mom or dad, yeah. Very nice or your very nice sister, yay for sisters. Um, yeah. Because when we wash someone's hand, that means we care about them and we want to do something special for them. And that's what Jesus was saying. Whenever we do something like wash each other's hands or feet or feed each other, then we're showing that we really like them. And so that's what Jesus is, is sharing with us. Is, and he said, you know, if I've done this for you guys, because he got down and he actually washed their feet, then you should care for each other just like I've cared for you. So let's, uh, we'll take that into our prayer. Let's say a prayer together. Thank you. Dear God, Dear God we, give you thanks we give you thanks for Jesus, for, Jesus, for his model, for his model of, servant of servant leadership. Help us also, Help us also to serve each other in the name of Christ. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. And I invite you to go back and be with your families. You can leave all the towels right on the little table there.
Wow. I'll never hear Ode to Joy again without thinking about Gary and Jeff playing it. Thank you, thank you so much for bringing, bringing the joy. Because that's the whole idea. When Jesus washed his disciples' feet, it wasn't with a sense of, oh no, I've got to wash all these stinky disciples' feet. <laughs> it was a sense of joy that he could offer something to them, a learning to them just to help them understand how they might love each other. So thank you, thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Gary. Well, let's listen. Yes. We're good. Good, good. So today I want to read from Isaiah, Isaiah 58. And we're reading Isaiah 58, 6 and following. And this is a reminder that this whole idea of service didn't just pop up with Jesus. It was really there in the preaching of the prophets in the name of God. So this is what Isaiah says. Why do we fast, but you don't see? Why humble yourselves, but you do not notice? Look. You serve your own interest on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel, to fight, to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose? A day to humble oneself. Is it to bow down with the head like a bulrush and lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast? A day acceptable to the Lord is not this, the fast that I choose. To loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house, and when you see the naked, to cover them? and not hide yourself from your own kin. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you and the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help and God will say, here I am. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, when I was a young seminarian, and we're talking many years ago, I decided that I should try this whole fasting thing as a spiritual discipline for Lent. So one Lent, I gathered a group of my fellow seminary students, and instead of going to the dining hall at McKay Campus Center, where we would normally go and eat, eat lunch, and lunch was a great time because we would eat in, in, in a round table, and then we'd have six people, and then eight would join us, and another five would join us, and we'd just hang out talking theology. It was just such a great thing. But... Not this Sunday, or not this Wednesday, we were gathered in a dorm room in Hodge Hall to read scripture and fast together and think, aren't we good Christians? And what I discovered in my brief fasting experiences, I'm not a good faster. It is not one of those spiritual disciplines that I do very well. In fact, I spent most of my time, fasting time, thinking about myself. And how hungry I was. I wasn't really that hungry, but I thought about it. I didn't spend that time thinking about God and other people. I think I was more interested in telling people that I was fasting than I was actually listening to God. So when I read Isaiah, I could completely understand when God says, hey, if you just think you're doing this fasting to please me, think again. 
I know there are people for whom fasting is a strong and a good spiritual discipline who can turn their face to God and their ears and their heart to God through fasting. Yay! I just found out I was not one of those because I fell into all the pitfalls that Isaiah suggests. So, I can relate to Isaiah when he challenges us who try to fast to do some introspection. Why are we doing it? Who are we really trying to impress? Are we turning our hearts and minds to God or centering on ourselves? So, I don't fast anymore. And now I could, I could probably fast a couple days and I wouldn't notice. But I can tell you, last Wednesday, I did discover a fast that was acceptable to God. I went over to the first AME feeding ministry that we have pictured in our bulletin. I was supposed to meet Pastor Abe and, and their new pastor. His name is Pastor Andre. Abe is trying to get us together so that our churches can continue that partnership that we've developed over the last three years. And so I was really excited about having lunch. So, yeah, I'm, I'm good at eating lunch, not so good at fasting. So having lunch with Abe and Andre, but they weren't able to make the meeting. But I wanted to go over anyway. And because we had nine of our people from our church, including three youth, that were helping at the first AME feeding ministry that day. So I went over. I pulled up into the parking lot right next to the church because I knew the church parking lot was going to be full and I, I knew there wouldn't be parking there, but there's a, a strip mall right next to the church where I, I pulled in thinking, well, there's always parking. No. There was only one parking space left in the entire parking area. And then, as I noticed, there were all people coming to First AME to get food for their families. So I get out of my car, and I start to walk over, and I notice three blocks worth of people along Route 1, all spread out, three abreast, waiting in 95-degree temperature, to get food for their families. And then the first people I encountered were the, the three First AME folks. Remember they came and they spoke to us about that mission? A couple of them sat there be, be in front of you and, and Glenn, Kitty, and then one was up here speaking about that mission, how it started out with five families being fed, and now there were like a hundred plus. Well, I saw them with my own eyes. And the ladies at First AME run up to me and say, Pastor Rob, Pastor Rob, thank you so much for your people being here this day because there's no way that the five of us at First AME could have fed all these hundreds of people as if I had anything to do with you all being there. And then the next folks I encountered were the heritage people who were packing up the food, carrying the boxes, handing out the food. Again, 95 plus degree temperature. Working together to feed Route 1 families in the neighborhoods there. And, 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 I, and I, my, one of my jobs whenever I show up is to take pictures. So the very first thing, remember, first thing I did was take a picture of, I think it was Emily and Kathy and, and uh, Mary, and, and Emily says, don't use this in worship. We're all hot and sweaty. And then I took a picture of Lila and, uh, uh, and Amy, and Lila said, don't get too close. I'm all hot and sweaty. So I did use the picture. Sorry. But the thing is, I was so impressed by the, the smiles on everyone's faces. I mean, they were working hard. They were exercising their muscles. It was hot out there. And yet every single person I encountered from our church, from AME, and all the folks that were there all had a smile on their face as they're handing out food to the God's children who happened to live along the Route 1 corridor. And I know God was smiling upon that 
picture because there he had his children from First AME, his children from Heritage, his children from the uh, neighborhood along Route 1, all working together to make sure that all God's people were fed. And I watched people for a while. And it was interesting as a fly on the wall to see the people serving food and the people receiving food just seeing the face of Christ in each other. It was amazing to me. And then, as I was heading out, I stopped at the table. They were handing out, remember those little baskets that our kids made at VBS? Those woven baskets with all these little goodies? And I got to see a little girl receive her basket. This is a little girl that had waited in line with her parents to get food for her family that she wasn't particularly interested. I mean, she would eat the food, but she wasn't. But when she got to that table with the little basket that had all the goodies just for her, she had a big smile on her face and she held that basket to her chest and I thought, God is happy. Now that's one I did not get a picture of because, well, I just etched that picture in my mind. That little girl had waited in line and finally there was something that said, you matter and we love you too. And I realized that this is the fast that God desires for us. To share our bread and our meat and our eggs and our fruit and they had watermelons with those who are hungry. And to treat those folks the way we treat our own family, our own kin. Since in Christ we are all children of God. We're part of the same family. And I noticed no frowns, but smiles on the people that were handing out the, face, the food. Same smiles I see in this sanctuary in our not-so-hot um, Sunday morning worship. And I saw a light, the light that Isaiah talks about. I saw that light in the eyes of the food servers, and I thought to myself, I've seen that light before. I saw that same light, Jeff, when we were at the Charlie's Place Remember when we were feeding the, the folks that were there? That was kind of good. But then afterwards, they said, just go out and mingle with the folks that are here. And I, one image, can I share it with them? About there's this lady that was a musician. Said, is there anyone here that can play the piano? And Jeff said, well, sure, I can play. And so he started to play. And then people started to dance. And I just thought, I saw the light of Christ in that moment at the pilgrimage. I've seen that same light, Howard, when I go and have an opportunity to go to Vic Hop and serve in the homeless shelter there. And, and we get a chance to serve people as they come in. And then we get a chance to, to stay with them overnight, 24 folks. I've seen that same light on the people that, were put, that put together boxes for folks at the Mount Vernon Day to Serve Mary. Have you seen that light in people? And the pictures, if you see a picture of people serving at Day to Serve, there is a shininess and a light in them. I saw that light, Susan, when we were in Malawi. Remember when they had an opportunity to feed us, and they did, they treated us like king and queen, and they fed us the best that they had even when they had nothing, but there was a light in their faces. And, and we saw that light in the Afghan family last Sunday, they invited a few of us to come over and to share an authentic Afghan meal as a way to thank the entire congregation uh, for all the, the household items that you all donated to them. So on behalf of all of you, we made the sacrifice to eat tasty Afghan food so that we could see the light shine in their eyes as they told us how they were getting settled in the United States. See, Isaiah says it well. When we're able to share our food with the hungry, even when we are the hungry, then our light shall break forth like the dawn, and healing shall spring up quickly. When I saw the folks who served at the AME Food Bank later, I saw Mary at our Bible study, I saw um, the kids, the youth later, I saw Joan later. Um, the talk was not about the heat. 
the talk was about the joy that they felt in serving. And that's what Isaiah is trying to tell us in Isaiah 58. God loves it when we share our communion meal with each other in worship service. And then God is even more excited when we take that meal that God has fed us out and give it to the rest of God's children. Indeed, that's what Jesus was doing. He was broadening the message as he washed his disciples' feet in John 13. When he says, so if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. For I've set an example that you should do as I've done to you. When we hear these commandments of Jesus, you should do this. We're tempted to see this calling as duty. We've got to do this. And we kind of put on our duty uh, robes and, 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 and get down to it. I mean, kind of like when Jesus said to uh, to the 12 disciples, and they, there were 5,000 people, and they what should we do? And Jesus looks them in the eye and says, you feed them. Or, or when Jesus uh, tells the parable of the Good Samaritan, and then at the end, who proved neighbor to the Samaritan, the, or to the man, the one that gave him care, and Jesus looks him in the eye and says, go and do likewise. So we tanked, tend to take those things and say, We've got to do this because Jesus says to do it. And yet what Jesus helps us realize is that when we serve one another, we are simply participating in the kingdom of God that God is creating in Jesus Christ. We're participating in the community of Christ that cares for one another every single day in every single way. And we're participating in a fellowship that's bigger than just a church. It, it, it covers the whole world of people that God created. And like Peter, the first step is realizing all that God has already done for us before we start to go out and try to serve others. And, and, and in that way, our service is not just meeting someone's physical needs but it also is a communicating of the agape, selfless love of God revealed in Jesus Christ. Our calling is not just to feed hungry people, not just to provide shelter or clothing to people in need. Our true calling is to live out our discipleship in Christ in a way that mirrors the love that we receive from Christ in our own lives. And so we mirror that out into the world as we participate as a whole family of Christ. That's why our Sunday school curriculum that I was talking about in the, the opening, our Sunday school curriculum this year is going to be all about what it means to be a disciple of Jesus. What it means to faithfully follow Jesus? What's it mean to faithfully worship Jesus? What's it mean to faithfully serve Jesus? And, and we're going to be looking at the same themes in age-appropriate ways with our youth, with our children, with our adults, and in worship. And we'll be exploring what it means to hear Jesus call and then to follow, to say yes to follow, and then to share hospitality in a bigger and broader way than we ever imagined. What it means to confess our sins before God, and ultimately what it means to live in the hope of the gospel. That'll be what we'll be doing in Advent, living into the hope of the gospel. We'll discover the same things that Isaiah preached on years, centuries ago, the same things that Jesus lived out in his life, in his ministry, that worship and service are actually the same thing. When we're worshiping God, we're serving God. When we're serving God, we are worshiping God. In fact, you know, if you looked up the word for worship in Hebrew, it's the word abad. It's not as fun to say as some other Hebrew words, but abad is the word. And the full meaning of that word is to orient one's whole life and existence to the sovereign master. Isn't that what we do in worship? We read scripture, we hear a sermon, we sing songs in order that we can take ourselves from the world we live in and orient ourselves every single week, orient ourselves, reorient ourselves 
to God. And then when we serve God in our feeding ministry or our homeless ministry, our clothing ministry, our tutoring ministry, our hospitality ministry, our teaching ministry, we are again orienting ourselves and our whole lives to God. Our benediction that we'll be reading today reminds us of that dual meaning of abad. The Revised Standard Version, the one I grew up with and many of you might have grown up with, and the King James Version, they, they say it this way. They say, make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with singing. But then when they retranslated it with the new Revised Standard Version, which I like a lot, they retranslated, make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. And you know what? They're both right. Our worship and our service are inextricably linked, and they are part of who we are as Presbyterian Christians. So, today I invite you in your bulletin to take a look at that vision statement. Today we are on the vision statement about service. And I wanna share what it says in that vision statement as we read it together as our affirmation of faith. Let's stand and confess what we believe together. Gratefully following the one who washed his disciples' feet, we listened to our neighbors working to meet their practical needs. We partner with others to become the hands and feet of God in the world, showing compassion and generosity to all creation. The Holy Spirit pushes us beyond the familiar, meeting people where they are as we share Christ's transformative love. Amen. Jesus. with your love to us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Kneels at the feet of his friends, silently washes their feet, master who acts as a slave to them. Yezu, Yezu, Fill us with your love, show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. These are the ones we should serve, these are the ones we should love. All these are neighbors to us and you. Yesu, Yesu. Fill us with your love, show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Please be seated as we come to God in prayer. Let us pray. Dear God, who became one of us, to show us how to love you and to love one another, we are thankful for the witness of Jesus Christ, who washed his disciples' feet, so that we might know the divine power of service in your name. Help us to emulate Jesus' example as we pray for healing and health for our members and for the world. Today we pray for Christine as she continues on bed rest to nurture the twins who are growing within her. Be with Emmanuel and Patty as they care for her and Ethan. We pray for Greer and Colby and their baby Cannon as he gets ready to come home from the NICU unit today. We pray for my niece Callie as she recovers from abdominal surgery and for her baby Asher as he continues to grow in their NICU unit. And I pray for my son Josh and his wife Hannah as they prepare for the birth of their daughter. Lord, be with all these young moms and their families as they share in the miracle of birth and new life. 
We also pray for those in our congregation who are convalescing at home, for your healing and your health to be upon them. We pray for Perry Sr. and for Pat as Perry continues to recover at home from his fall. We pray for P.D. and his wife Mary as P.D. continues to convalesce at home. And we thank you for a time we had with P.D. two weeks ago at the men's prayer gathering. We pray for Mary Lyons and Pat Meeks as they continue to live at home under the care of their families. And we pray for Beth and for Sam as they care for one another. We pray for your healing hand to rest upon Bob and for Gail as she cares for him. And we pray for Pam as she deals with sciatica, that she might find relief from her pain. We pray that you will be with our sister Jackie Donato as she recovers from a fall, an accident, and Mary Poulin as she continues to struggle with pain in her hip and knee. Be with Sarah as she undergoes tests and let your healing hand be upon all these sisters in Christ. And Lord, we pray for the whole world in need of healing today. We pray for those in California and Europe who are dealing with wildfires and really all those who are suffering under this intense heat. We pray for those in Ukraine who continue to suffer the ravages of war, but we realize that is not the only war that's going on. So we pray for all those whose lives are torn apart by conflict and by war. We pray for refugees from so many nations who are fleeing war and oppression and poverty. Help us discover ways that we can be your healing agents for those in need. We pray for those who are hungry in our community, in our nation, and abroad. We pray a word of thanks for the privilege to participate in your feeding ministry right here in our community and throughout the world. Lord, you have given us the gift of service and the example of Christ. Help us to serve you as we care for one another. In the name of, of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, as we say together the prayer that Jesus taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and deliver us and lead, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come into God's presence with singing. Amen. Amen. 